What's up guys, Silver here with part 5 of our Halo Reach Lasso journey. We are starting up Long Night of Solace, one of the two toughest missions for sure. This one and Pillar of Autumn would be top two. Uh, we are going to make this easier though for you, like we always do. We're going to start up on the beach here and we're going to just continue as we're supposed to be doing. But instead of actually fighting the battle here, we're going to turn left and go over here and jump over this and make it into the water over here. And you're going to hit a uh, soft kill zone, so... Uh, you have 10 seconds to uh, get out of there, but you're out of there at this point. Just stay about here. It doesn't actually show the soft kill zone because of the blind skull, which is kind of weird. I figured that would come through at least, but it does not. So just follow this path, and you should be safe, uh, and you will be able to move past that entire battle. All of the enemies are distracted by Noble Team actually taking the correct path you're supposed to be taking, and we're just going to make a beeline to this direction, and we're going to take out a wraith that's going to land over here shortly. So we're going to come over here, and you're going to find a bridge up ahead here. And we're going to hide, like, in this bridge. You can see there's kind of, like, two... Uh, there's the spirit right there that's bringing the wraith in. And we're kind of hiding, like, in this little area. So the spirit does not actually shoot at us. So hang here. When the spirit stops moving forward and pauses for a second, then you can move forward and uh, come over here. And we're going to board this wraith from behind. But you want to make sure that you actually board it from behind. That's important because if you board it on the front, the turret on the front will actually just shoot you off and kill you. So once you do uh, kill that uh, Wraith, just beat it to death. You'll have full shields because you will have meleeed it from the Black Eye Skull. And then you could hide under that platform for a little bit. Uh, but be aware that there's a soft kill zone there as well. So you have 10 seconds to come out from under there uh, or you will die. So we're just kind of hiding under there for a second so the spirit does not shoot at us. Then we're going to make our way over here. And you don't need to do any of this part, uh, but you will actually be able to speed things up considerably. Uh, just by being in this position and picking these enemies off. But Noble Team will kill everybody for you uh, if you just let them. So if you don't feel confident at all or you're just lazy and you want to leave the room and uh, do something else while Noble Team cleans up the beach, you could do that. Uh, just find a little hiding spot where you're not going to be found and let Noble Team do their work. But you could always just hang here and just pick these guys off with your pistol to speed things up. So that's what we're going to do here. You can see they're doing a pretty good job of distracting these guys. They don't even look at us most of the time. Uh, but be aware of that concussion rifle wielding uh, elite. But it looks like he's dead, so never mind. Don't worry about him. If you shoot him in the head and kill him, don't worry about him. Uh, be aware of those uh, needler rifle wielding jackals. They're usually closer to you on the rock where we were, and you could pick them off real quick. But sometimes they do move uh, to that position. But we're going to grab a DMR, and I don't know why because we're going to uh, get rid of that weapon immediately. But we're going to move up here, and there's going to be a Marine running at you, so grab his rockets. He always has rockets. Grab those, and we're going to go up to this Marine who also has rockets, and we're going to kill him. So we're going to melee him to death. It should take like three or four hits, and we're going to take his rockets as well. So we guarantee we have at least two rockets because famine's on, so we don't get that much ammo for it. But we'll guarantee that we have at least two, and that's all we need, really. But we're going to hug the right wall as we sprint up and get behind this Elite, and then we'll be able to melee him for a one-hit kill from behind, and then we'll move up through this door. And we're going to move up to another door up here on the right, which actually takes a little bit of time to open up because there's a whole uh, big reveal about the Saber ship that we're approaching. So we're just going to hang by the door here, though. And on the other side of this door, there's going to be a sword. And you want to make sure you grab that sword so you have a sword and rockets uh, when you go to the next section. So you could look and see what weapons you have by holding the back button on Xbox. I'm not sure what the button is on PC, but hold that button and it will show you what you have. You could see I saw my sword and my rockets uh, were what I had in my hand. So hold the back button. It shows you what you have in your hands. Then switch your weapon. Hold the back button again to see what your other weapon is. And it shows your armor ability too as well. So uh, we have rockets and a sword heading into this. We'll turn you around. And we're going to use that once we get back on uh, foot here. But right now we're in space. And you want to fly to the right. Uh, right when you spawn in, you want to fly up and to the right. And you'll be able to see this big, uh, pretty looking... Uh, I don't even know what it is. It's a bunch of stars or something. A bunch of nonsense. It's the biggest, brightest, prettiest thing in the sky here. So we're going to move towards that, and then it will. Uh, we won't be able to move towards that anymore because the end of the playable area. But we flew over here because this gives us a really good angle for the approaching uh, enemy ships that are going to warp into existence over here. They're going to warp in right in front of us now, and we have a really good angle because they're going to be flying away from us and to the right. So just hang out here, and uh, you'll know they're coming in after a bunch of dialogue occurs, and you'll be able to see them uh, kind of warp in from slip space. So just keep looking in this general direction. Uh, I'm flying around in circles because I don't want to get past the point where they fly in from. So I just want to make sure that they're still in front of me. So that's what I'm doing there. That's why I'm running in circles. And here they come. The first wave is some banshees. And you can see they fly out in a straight line. So 
it's pretty easy to kill a bunch of them really quickly. I don't actually kill that many, unfortunately. So you could kill a straight line of them as they come out, but then you want to look down and to the right because there's a bunch more that are streaking up from below. So uh, you could get like a kill in there at this point if you're uh, good enough. I was not good enough. Uh, I was used to that targeting reticle, which uh, kind of leads the target if you're uh, using a weapon that doesn't uh, use hit scan. Uh, as in get to the target that you shot at immediately it takes you kind of got to lead the target um, but because uh, I was practicing lasso without the blind skull on like a scrub and now I got the blind skull on and I don't have that uh, that target to uh, shoot at but anyway we'll make do with it uh, so once we take out all the banshees we want to go back to that same position we were at fly towards that pretty thing and try to uh, get in that same position because there's going to be some seraphs that come in and the seraphs are more annoying to deal with because they have energy shields that you have to deal with so you actually have to take down their shields with your uh, chain gun. And then once that happens, you could lock on with your uh, missiles. So the missiles will actually not lock on uh, if you don't have their energy shield down. So you want to make sure you drain their shields and then you can lock on with the missiles. You could also finish them off with the chain gun if you want as well, but uh, the missiles are more effective and faster. So here we go. They've spawned in and we're going to chase one of them. Uh, just pick one in particular that has kind of peeled off from the group and you could hopefully divide and conquer. If you start getting shot at from uh, behind, a good way to avoid taking additional fire is to actually just uh, do one of the saber maneuvers, which is kind of like the banshee maneuvers. Uh, you could flip to the right or the left or do uh, a 180, but it's not really a 180. It's more of a flipping upside down and then starting to go in the other direction. But it's really effective because when you're getting shot at from behind, it means that there is a seraph chasing you, obviously. So when you do that, when you uh, do a flip and start going the other direction, the Seraph will usually just pass right over you or pass right by you and uh, kind of just peel off and start ignoring you again because um, he doesn't have a good angle on you anymore. So that is definitely something to do if you're getting shot from behind. But we're going to continue fighting these guys, continue shooting at them. And uh, there's actually a good chance that if you just don't do any of this, if you just totally ignore these enemies and go hide somewhere, that your uh, friendly forces in the area will take these guys out for you. So I'm just showing you uh, kind of the first waves of enemies that we could take out easily because uh, the first waves are not too bad They're kind of like a tutorial for space combat. This is the first time there has been space combat in a halo game So understandably there's a uh, kind of some tutorial-esque uh, waves of enemies here And then we're going to uh, have a big battle and I'll show you where you could hide during that big battle And your friendly forces will actually take out all of the opposing enemies So you could just hide really for this entire uh, segment if you don't like the space combat, which I could understand if you're not into the space combat. Some people are into it, some people aren't. It is an FPS game, so it is a little uh, out of place slightly if you're uh, just looking to uh, run and gun the whole time. But uh, we got to get over that. We're in a saber. We're in a spaceship right now. Got to take these guys out. So we're going to clean these guys up. And then there's going to be a uh, big wave of enemies that come in, like I promised. So... I believe this is the last guy, but I'm not sure. We'll see once we take him out if there's some more dialogue. Uh, they do get chatty. There are... Oh, here's here's another one. Never mind. I lied. But as we're taking this last guy out, I will talk about the Iron Skull. The Iron Skull uh, is the skull that makes you uh, go back to the beginning of the mission if you are playing solo. If you're playing co-op, it only brings you back to the last checkpoint if one of you dies. Uh, but the solo one is the most crippling one. And uh, there is a workaround for that. I do die a handful of times in this playthrough. Um, I have beaten this uh, with no deaths on Lasso, but this run through in particular, I did die a handful of times. And you'll see uh, some instances where it looks like the video skipped ahead a little bit. And you'll be able to see on my timer on the bottom right that there is uh, an instance where it will just jump ahead uh, a certain amount of time. Uh, that's because I cut the part out where I died and then I resumed uh, my successful run. But here's the big wave back in action, and you really just want to focus on killing all those Banshees. The Banshees uh, come in in the same pattern they did in the first wave, so you want to take out as many Banshees as possible. And then we're going to fly behind Anchor 9 over here, and we're going to park ourselves in a spot where you could hide for a long time and just wait for your enemies or your friendlies to kill all the enemies. But going back to the Iron Skull, the way to get those checkpoints back and to actually be able to use them is to immediately when you die, you want to hit Start. So once you die, hit Start immediately. Then go to save and quit, and then when you go back to the main menu, uh, you will hit resume in the lobby, and you will just resume at your last checkpoint. So you want to make sure right when you die, you don't let the game respawn you into the uh, level, because that will respawn you into the level at the beginning of the mission. So that would not be good. Start, save and quit, resume, you're good. 
So I'm behind Anchor 9 right now, and this is a very safe space. Most of the enemies totally ignore this whole area. Sometimes you'll get one that flies by here, but most of the time not. And we're going to fly to the right side of the back of Anchor 9 here, and we're going to hold back on the joystick to slow ourselves down, and that will allow us to kind of crash into here, but not enough to kill us. And we will actually be able to wedge our nose into the bottom left of here and be able to take our hands off the joystick, and we'll just continue to fly into this corner until all of the enemies are dead. And then we're going to... When we want to get out of there, if we're flying into the bottom left corner, we want to fly up into the right because that will allow us to get out of there without actually killing ourselves. If you try to fly in a different direction, uh, you will crash and take a bunch of damage and die. But at this point, the phantoms are coming in, and the five phantoms are the last wave of enemies in this part. Uh, and we could actually just stay in the position we were in where we were just hiding behind Anchor 9. Uh, but I decided I wanted to speed things up, so I'm going to show you how you could more safely... Uh, tackle these phantoms and it's from below uh, we are going to fly as far down as we can and then come up from directly below them because the whole battle is happening up there and it's not happening down here so it, there's a kind of a plane uh, where the battle occurs and if we just fly below that plane uh, we could just come up and attack from below and then once we start getting shot at once we start getting noticed like right now we could start flying back down and uh, safely uh, just hang out down here so I like to try to fly towards this uh, hurricane-looking uh, cloud down here most of the time, which I'm not looking at right now. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that, that cloud later, but uh, we'll head back up here, and you can tell where the phantoms are because it looks like they have a tiny little force field in front of them. So uh, they're kind of tough to spot from below, but just look for uh, a ship that has like a kind of a glowing line in front of them. It looks like a glowing line from our point of view, but I guess they have some kind of tiny force field uh, blocking uh, all the shots from Anchor 9's guns. So we're going to assist them with our missile pods as we uh, get close to them. You can't lock on right away. Uh, you'll be able to hear your systems locking on, though. Unfortunately, you can't see uh, how far away you are or anything because there's no uh, information from the blind skull being on. But uh, we'll make do like we do. So we'll just keep flying up and down. And uh, you're pretty safe uh, when you're down here. Obviously, it gets less safe as you get closer to the Phantom. And you do need to get a little close to the Phantom to actually lock on. But you should be able to get away a few salvos uh, before you get shot at. I got shot at a lot more than I usually do with this strategy. Usually safer than this. Uh, I mean, it worked out here. I didn't die or anything. But uh, usually I feel like it's easier than this. But it's working out still. Maybe uh, we have to fly up and down a few more times than usual. But uh, here we go. It's working out. And uh, again, you don't have to do this. The guns of the Anchor 9 system, the whole uh, space station here, will actually take out all of these enemies uh, without help from you. But uh, just to speed things up, at least in all my uh, tests where I just kind of let them do all the work, it uh, worked out. So maybe there's some uh, randomness involved where they might not take out all the enemies uh, sometimes. But from what I've seen, uh, they do pretty good work out there every single time. So... We're just going to keep on flying around down below, and then we're going to approach from below like a Kraken about to strike. Maybe these should be called Krakens, but those are those are vehicles, massive uh, vehicle platforms in uh, in Halo 5. I guess that name's already taken, even though this game came out first. But we're just keeping on doing the same thing here, uh, waiting for these phantoms to uh, give up. Just, they should just self-destruct. We all know how this is going to end. Reach might fall at the end, spoiler, but you know what? These phantoms are going down first. So we're just going up, we're going down, poking our heads up, poking our heads back down. We're like ostriches one day, we're groundhogs another. But one good thing about this space battle, and thank God for it, is the fact that your shielding system on this saber is not affected by the black eye skull. So your shields will replenish along with the integrity of your ship, which kind of is a substitute for health. I think it's hull integrity or something like that. I can't, I can't read it on the screen right now because the blind skull's on. Uh, but yeah, it will respawn uh, and replenish itself, which is very nice, because I don't know how I would go about meleeing somebody with a vehicle. I guess that's just splattering, but I feel like that would just kill you uh, in this scenario. But uh, we're getting close to the end here. The Phantoms, time is almost up. We're going up, we're going down. Bobbing for apples, coming up, spitting them back at the Phantom. I don't know what we're talking about here anymore. I just need this part to be over. The strats have been spoken... And we just need them to take effect, and we could move on to the next section. Once these guys uh, die, I'm going to speed up the video so we could dock at Anchor 9 and not take as much time, because we need to we need to move on here. 
It looks like the Phantoms are dead. Everyone's uh, piecing out. And now we can speed up the video, and we're going to approach Anchor 9 slowly, even though I've sped this part up so it looks fast. We want to make sure that we slowly approach Anchor 9 at this section, because if we go too fast, if you're boosting, you could actually kill yourself and splatter yourself against the, uh, the Anchor 9 station there. But we're going to skip the cutscene, and immediately when you spawn in here, you want to boost and dive down under this ship. And then you want to turn up right here, and you can see a bunch of banshees that are docked, and you want to kill as many as possible. I don't do a great job here. You could get a Killionaire and more than a Killionaire here. Uh, I only killed like half of them or something, so they dove down and uh, went to the right and the left. So I'm going to have to take them out the hard way. But it's great if you could actually get a bunch of kills under the ship, because then obviously you don't have to deal with them you know, flying around and attacking you. You could just kill them before they're even a problem, really. But at uh, this point, we are going to kill the remaining banshees, and then there's going to be some seraphs that come into play as well. So we're going to have to fight them, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing right now. But you can see I'm taking cover behind this ship. Most of the uh, fighting and uh, enemies are on the other side of this ship. This ship is uh, basically running in a circle around the Covenant ship. So if you want to uh, get your shields back, get a little reprieve from the battle, try to fly around behind this ship, which is circling the big battle. Uh, so uh, it's not a guarantee that you'll be totally safe behind there, because some ships can fly uh, around and at you but you're much safer, you're much more likely to get your shields back when you're behind this thing. And also, uh, he is actually helping you. He shoots at all the uh, enemies as well, so you could actually prioritize the enemies that are being shot at by him because they are going to be weaker and you'll be able to take them out faster if you kind of uh, team up and fire at the same enemy at the same time. But you could see that the Corvette engine's damage is 0 of 4. That's the current objective. But what you want to do before you damage those engines is actually take out all of the enemies that are in the area because once you do take out those engines there will be a bunch more enemies that spawn in so you want to not have uh, a ton of enemies fighting you at once you want to be able to keep them separated a divide and conquer mentality so kill a group a and then you'll be able to kill group b uh later so you won't have to kill group a and b at the same time obviously makes perfect sense you know what i'm talking about but uh, we've killed group a so we're going to take out the engines right now and another thing you want to be aware of is just because you took out all the banshees and seraphs does not mean you're safe here uh, there are a bunch of turrets on this big Covenant ship that you're actually firing at right now. So just be aware of that. You can see I'm getting shot at here. Uh, there's a bunch of guns on the backside. There are some guns, some pretty serious guns, on the sides of this ship. So don't get too close to that ship. If you try to kind of fly right over that uh, turret, it will do some pretty good damage on you. So avoid that. And take out these engines. It's taken me a while to take out these engines. I feel like uh, I've been struggling a little bit here. I don't know why I can't shoot at them. They're not really moving that much. But uh, we got three or four here. Can we get number four? There it is. And once you kill the fourth engine, there will be a wave of uh, seraphs that come in. So I'm going to hide behind my lovely, friendly ship over here momentarily. It looks like I got an achievement. Wake up, Buttercup, which is to take out the uh, Corvette's engines and escort in under three minutes. I did not feel like I did it that quickly, but I guess I did. So even when you're struggling, you could get this achievement, I suppose. But anyway, we'll stay behind the Savannah for a little bit. And you can see that the Savannah's guns are firing at the uh, enemy formation up here. And they're firing at a particular uh, ship. So I'm going to try to combine fire with the, uh, the Savannah, which is my friendly ship over here, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, but I'm looking to uh, kind of... I don't know what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for an opening. I'm just hiding behind the ship. Just do all the work for me. Which, it probably will do all the work for you if you just want to be patient and hide behind the ship. But uh, I'm going to speed things up here like we do. So it looks like we've picked this one to uh, take out. So I'm just going to keep firing at him. And maybe he was taken out. I don't know. I did a, I did one of those 180s. Yep, we took him out. So uh, you can see if you get a, uh, an enemy kill by the uh, score popping up. So that's why I have the score on. Uh, is because I will know when I have killed an enemy. So that's very useful, especially on Lasso. You could throw like a grenade around a corner and you're like, did I kill that guy around the corner with that nade? I'm not sure, but if you have the scoring on, you'll know if you killed an enemy and how many of those enemies. But we're getting close to the end of this firefight here. We're wrapping up and we're going to board the ship momentarily. And we're going to combine fire, like I mentioned, with our friendly ship. And you can see how effective it is when you do that. Uh, I'm not even going to use my missile pods. I'm going to just keep at them with my chain gun and uh, combine with the other chain gun of the other ship. It's pretty quick to kill uh, those seraphs. So at this point, we got some dialogue saying, hey, you know, uh, try to board that ship, baby. There looks like there's some uh, weakness on the top. So we're going to go over here. And again, you could crash into this ship and die. So take it slow when you're coming in here. And you'll get the cutscene. We're going to skip it. 
Uh, we want to take out our sword, and there's going to be an elite that pops up through this uh, shield door. It's more like a shield ceiling. But he pops up with a jetpack, and we're going to just slice him a couple times to kill him, and then we're going to sprint and jump over the whole uh, shield door, and another elite will come out. We're going to take him out the same way, and then we're going to drop down onto this support beam and rocket one elite and then the second elite. So you want to directly hit them with that rocket uh, to kill them to ensure that you get the kill. A direct hit with the rocket will take them out, and then that way there are only two more elites alive down here. And then your marine buddies will drop down here as well. And once they're uh, down here and engaging the elites and distracting them, you could drop down. And we're going to run around. And you want to stay up here. And you want to get the attention of the elites because they will actually uh, come towards you and fly up. But one good thing about the jetpack when they're using it is when they're jetpacking, they actually cannot shoot you. So you're going to see this guy jetpack up. And he's totally vulnerable. He's unable to uh, attack me. So I'm just going to slice him once and kind of uh, send him flying a little bit. And then I'm going to slice him again easily enough. And I'm going to do the same thing for that second elite as well. And then once you kill those two elites, uh, we've cleared out the whole room. But you quickly want to make your way over here and grab a needler rifle. And then we're going to drop down here to this doorway, which is going to open up. And there's going to be three elites and a... Or no, three grunts and an elite. And we want to take out the grunts as fast as possible with the uh, needler rifle. So we get to kill them with three uh, bullets. We'll super combine and kill them. So you could quickly take them out, and then the Elite will probably retreat, which is fine with us. And we want to move this crate to uh, kind of block the uh, area. We're going to use it as a barricade. I'm just jumping up here to get more ammo again. And then we're going to go down here, and there are two plasma pistols on the ground that have 100 uh, charge in it. So a full plasma pistol, two full plasma pistols. And we're going to go over here and continue knocking this uh, crate. We want to have it uh, situated like this, so on its back or on its front. Uh, we don't want it standing up, so... This is a perfect uh, crate. We don't want it, uh, if you do keep smacking it, you want to make sure you lay it flat again. You don't want it uh, standing up. So uh, it's easy to move because the gravity is uh, not on entirely right now. It's a very low grav environment. But when we get into this room, we want to go up the ramp to the left and we're going to prioritize this uh, engineer. It takes two super combines to kill this engineer, so six shots. And then we want to prioritize the fuel rod wielding grunt down here. So you can see he's shooting at me right now. Uh, he's normally in a better position for me to be able to shoot and kill him easily. He's more uh, often in the distance rather than up close. But we killed him anyway. And then we want to take out a handful of grunts while we're here. And you don't have to spend too much time in here. We're going to back up into the hallway we just came from where we were smacking that crate around. And we want to make our way in there sooner rather than later because it is super safe. And the enemies will actually come at us, uh, which is what we want. And we're going to do that right about now. So we're going to go behind that crate, and grunts will continue coming at us. We could easily super combine them, and elites are going to come at us as well. But with this crate, they can't really shoot at us that much because, again, like I mentioned in the Oni sword base guide, they don't do a great job of shooting you in the head. They more likely will try to shoot you in the chest, and you could have your chest behind this crate and uh, be safe from most of the damage they're going to try to dish out. So you can see we took out that elite. This elite's coming at us now. We're just going to pepper them with our plasma pistol, Get his shield to pop real quick, and then we're just going to finish him off with a headshot real quick. Turn him into a unicorn. Give him that nice spike right in the forehead. And we're just going to really just rinse and repeat that whole process. Uh, one annoying thing is the fact that since the gravity is so low right now, uh, the shots uh, from the uh, Elite's guns will actually push back the crate. So it's a little annoying, but uh, nothing we can't deal with. I'd rather have the crate uh, just get pushed back at me and take the damage for me instead of me taking the damage. So we're going to go back here, grab some more ammo as you need it. I don't really need it, but uh, I want to just, you know, keep as much ammo as possible on me. And eventually there will only be two elites left in this room uh, and possibly one grunt. Uh, they tend to not like to charge your position anymore uh, once they realize all their friends are dying. So there might still be a grunt around here, so just be cautious as you're exiting this hallway. Uh, he might be on the left or the right side of your uh, door there, so don't get flanked. Uh, or just be aware of your flanks, I should say. And we can move this crate up. And we will be able to shield ourselves from the two elites that remain. Because one of them has a focus rifle, which is pretty devastating. This guy's all up in my business. Looks like uh, I was unaware of the fact that there's a third elite here. Uh, I went over here a little too soon. And that was pretty uh, lucky. I was able to... Or it was more skillful, too. There was some skill involved there. Uh, but I did almost die. So we're going to move forward here. Now there are only two elites. You want to be a little more patient than I was, apparently. We're going to move up here, and the two elites like to hang out on the platform opposite us right now. So they're right over there. 
by the door controls. And they're going to stay over there. They don't charge your position here. So we got to try to take them out from over here. So we could do that by kind of similarly employing the strategy of pistoling them uh, with the plasma pistol uh, from afar and just poking your head barely over the edge so you could shoot them, but they tend to not be able to shoot you because they like to shoot your chest and your chest is obscured by this railing type thing. So they do like to uh, dodge around. They like to sidestep, uh, but just keep peppering them. You'll land a few shots and then you'll be able to keep their shield going down and you'll be able to pop their shield eventually. I popped this guy's shield, and then I don't know where he went, so I cannot land the headshot. I don't know where he went, but we'll just do it again. We got a lot of plasma pistol ammo, and your plasma pistol does not drain that much. When you're shooting these tiny shots, uh, you actually have a lot of shots. So we don't really have to worry about running out of ammo anytime soon. The overcharged plasma pistol bursts drain it really quick, but these uh, do not actually. Even with famine on, running out of plasma pistol is not something you really need to worry about. So spread that green gun love as much as you want. Uh, no worries there. And this guy keeps getting his shield popped by me, and he doesn't want to die. He just keeps retreating, keeps running away. I don't get it. He just wants to survive. It's a foreign concept to me. He should just give up and accept what's coming to him. And it will come to him here. There it is. Got the headshot. All right. So, uh, needle rifles are annoying to use in one way if you're actually trying to tear through someone's shields because it will actually get them to dodge more, especially with tough luck on. Enemies are very aware that there's a super combine coming their way if they don't dodge, so we could actually use that to our advantage, which we'll do later, but uh, right now it's annoying. So we're going to uh, keep peppering these guys, and you could actually activate the door controls uh, without having killed this guy, so uh, when he gets to be by himself, he starts moving around more, and you have more of a window of opportunity to close the gap and then just activate the door control, and then it will cue the cutscene, and uh, you will be able to just totally not have to deal with them. So that's what we're going to do here. Jump up here and activate the controls. And then this is a stupid thing I did. Do not do this. Uh, I pause here. We want to run to the door I'm going to run to uh, as soon as possible. But I'm waiting here and trying to pick up this health pack. Don't do that. Immediately run to this right door. And we're going to uh, sprint right here and sprint around the corner and immediately assassinate one of these elites. And you actually are able to more easily kill these elites if you do it right away because you actually startle them. They get surprised by you if you get there right away. Unfortunately, my sprint was not uh, charged, so I couldn't sprint around the corner quickly. But go to that right door right when you spawn in, and then right when it opens, your sprint will be recharged in time, and you'll be able to sprint to the left and take them by surprise. And the elites are actually a lot more easy to uh, kill in that manner because they kind of are stunned for a little bit and just stand there. Uh, here, we want to follow this path and then drop down here, and there's an elite right there who you could assassinate. And for this guy... He's either right there or right on this station, and you could assassinate him as well. And uh, the one thing that was stupid about me trying to pick up that health pack is the fact that when you spawn back into uh, this mission after the cutscene, you spawn in with full health, so that's why I couldn't pick it up. So I'm an idiot, and I wasted time, and I almost uh, was unable to pull off that double assassination, which gets harder once the uh, elites start moving around. Anyway, we're going to move this crate, and we're going to move it and uh, situate it with this concussion rifle. I grabbed the concussion rifle out of the crate uh, behind me, so I'm more easily able to maneuver this thing into position. But you want to try to make sure that this thing is standing up on its side, so it blocks a maximum amount of space. Uh, we're going to use it to block this door here. But I've skipped ahead here, and that is good enough for now. That's pretty good. Uh, we're going to come back and add to that later, but for now, that will suffice. And we're going to go down here, and we're going to move this concussion rifle crate into this hallway that we're going to go through. And be uh, aware of your plasma rifle. You don't want to lose that. I almost lost it into the hole there, but luckily I was able to grab it out of there. And we're going to just use the concussion rifle. I forgot almost to kill my friends. You don't want any Marines alive because they'll just gum up the works. But we're going to move this crate through the hallway here, and you could more easily do that with the concussion rifle ammo. So you don't actually need the concussion rifle to actually kill anybody or anything or pull off any other tricks. Uh, it's just really a tool to move this crate more easily so you're not, you know, stuck here for a half hour moving this crate into position. So we're going to just do this a little bit. A couple more shots should be good. Once it gets around this bend, you are set for the most part. So we'll leave it at that. And we're going to go back here and grab our uh, plasma rifle, or no, plasma pistol that we were talking about. Make sure you don't lose that. And we'll move back in here and we're going to use this crate like we've been using all the other crates, uh, basically as a place to hang out behind so we don't get shot that much and we could plasma pistol all the enemies over the top of it. So that's what we're going to do here. But here we are at the bridge, and there's going to be three different scenarios that you're presented with. 
Uh, the first one is no grunts are in the middle of the room looking at the hologram. The second one is only one grunt is looking at the hologram, which is what we have right here. And the other scenario is there's two grunts in the middle of the room looking at the hologram. The worst one is two grunts because that means you cannot uh, sneakily assassinate all of the enemies in the room. If you only have one grunt or if you have no grunts in that uh, center area looking at that hologram, you could actually sneak around and assassinate all of the enemies in the room uh, before they even know you're there. So if you do want to take the sneaky route, if you have zero or one grunts in the middle of the room, you just want to make sure that you're keeping tabs on all of the elites and where they are and where they're looking because a couple of them like to move around. So just make sure you're kind of aware of where they are. But I'm just going to aggro all these guys and kind of show you what would happen if uh, you had two grunts in the middle of the room and you weren't allowed to sneakily kill everybody. So that's why I just blew my cover. I just wanted to show you guys how to deal with this room if you are uh, not given the good spawns and you're given the crappy spawns. So they are all aware of our presence. But we're basically going to handle these guys in the same way that we did uh, when we were kind of hanging out between the maps Zealot and Corvette. The multiplayer map Zealot, Firefight map Corvette. Uh, when we were in the hallway, we had the box in front of us for cover. And we were peppering the elites from afar with the plasma pistol. And uh, we used the needler rifle to super combine the grunts. Uh, the only difference in this section is really uh, they are more uh, likely to just kind of hide. They don't run straight at you. Uh, the elites don't run straight at you like they did in that previous section I was referencing. And uh, the grunts don't do that either. So they're going to be a little tougher to uh, take the shield down of. Um, but it's not going to be too bad. So... Just be patient. Uh, we're going to move this box up so we can more effectively use it, push it more towards the doorway itself uh, so we could get a better view of the whole room while still being behind this thing. And I did mention that none of the enemies charge your location in this room. That is not 100% true. There is going to be an invisible sword-wielding elite uh, that spawns in this room as well. So you want to keep an eye out for him because he will charge your location if given the chance. So just keep your eye out for any shimmers that may indicate there is an invisible elite. Uh, there was one right there, but that was not the sword-wielding one. There's going to be two or three, I think, in this room. Uh, one is going to have a sword uh, out of the invisible elites, so keep an eye out for that guy. And be careful if you poke your head out the door, because sometimes the sword elite will charge your position, but then retreat uh, if you're shooting at him. And sometimes he'll kind of take refuge, like, right on the side of the doorway. So when you poke your head in the room, he'll just slice you from the side. So be aware of that as well. Uh, but we're just going to stay safely over here. But we're just going to finish this guy off from far, far away, so he has no chance of getting at us. So we finished him off there. That's probably the most uh, dangerous elite in this room. So he's down. The second most dangerous guy is the concussion rifle wielding general up ahead here. So he's probably hiding up there behind something. But we got another invisible elite up here. We're going to hide behind here again and just use this uh, like we have been. Nothing special here. Just pepper him from afar. And uh, what we're going to do for the concussion rifle wielding uh, elite, he likes to hide a lot. He doesn't like to poke his head out and uh, allow us to shoot him from the hallway normally. So we're actually going to close in on his position and we're going to use the needler rifle because like I mentioned earlier, the needler rifle makes enemies dodge a lot. So that allows you to get in close to them and then get behind them and assassinate them. So we're going to kind of sneak up on the elite. We got to find him first. I'm not sure exactly where he is. But we're going to use all this cover to kind of find where he is and then close the gap or the majority of the gap. And then once we have to kind of jump out and uh, get close to him, super close to him, we'll uh, use the needler rifle to make the elite jump around and dodge. Sometimes they go into armor lock as well, which is good, so you could just wrap up around behind them and assassinate them as they come out of it. But this elite is having a pretty good round of hide and seek right now. I do not know where he is. Uh, I don't like being that far to the left. It's kind of uh, scary over there because there's not that much cover once you get over there. Uh, so I'm going to cut back here. We're going to go to the right. Uh, seems like that could be the only other place he could be. So we'll see. We're going to move over here cautiously. And there he is. I don't know where he was. He kind of popped out over there. But uh, now we know where he is at least, so that's good. But we're going to close the gap real quick and take him out mono e alito. But uh, you could try to pepper him from afar like we do with the other elites. But he has that concussion rifle, which is pretty devastating. So it's kind of tough to uh, take down his shield without you taking a lot of damage as well. So we're just going to sneak up on him, get close to him, and remember to take out your needler rifle because we're going to use that. But once you get close enough and you see him, you want to start firing at him. And that will get him to dodge or go into armor lock. So we'll see what happens here. We're moving up. He is now in armor lock, which is perfect. We could just keep firing at him so he stays in armor lock until we're in position behind him. Give him the old back whack, and that is a one-hit kill. And you don't have to worry about the EMP effect uh, in campaign. There doesn't seem to be any EMP uh, that will take down your shield. So don't worry about that when the elite comes out of armor lock. So now our next task is to activate the bridge control. Uh, but we don't want to do that just yet. We want to put this crate back where we found it, or at least back in the same room that we found it. We're going to use this to complete that barricade we started uh, before we came into this room. So just concussion rifle this back. 
You should have plenty of ammo. There's some concussion rifle in this crate itself. And if you run out of concussion, uh, there's actually a bunch more up ahead here. Remember, we uh, exchanged for our plasma pistol. So here it is lying on the ground still. And we have a bunch of concussion rifle ammo to deal with where we could just uh, fire this thing over to that barricade to complete it. So I'll skip ahead a little bit. So this is looking pretty good. We have our second crate up there, almost in position. And obviously when it gets close to being in position, we don't want to use the concussion rifle anymore because that will probably blast it uh, further away than we want it. And it'll probably blast that first one we already have in place away as well. So start uh, just punching it to move it. And then uh, we will be able to get it nice and snug. The reason we're doing this is because enemies spawn behind this door. And by putting these uh, crates here and making sure they're nice and flat against that door, they won't be able to move through and attack us. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to put our Needler rifle down on the ground here, actually, so we could have some ammo uh, when we come up here. So I'm just going to juggle some weapons, leave the Needler rifle right about there so it's through the doorway, and now we're going to make our way back to the bridge, and we're going to do a little more setup in here. We want to effectively have a plasma pistol, which we could grab from one of the grunts, and we want to have a Needler rifle as well. And there's a crate of Needler rifles in this room. So we're going to grab a plasma pistol off the ground, which we did. We're going to grab a Needler rifle from the crate, which is on the side over here. We're going to grab this in a hot second. Here we go. We're running at it now. So on the left side of the door as you enter, uh, there's going to be this crate of Needler rifle ammo. Uh, unless it got uh, displaced by a plasma nade or a uh, concussion rifle round or something. But it should be somewhere in the room at least. And this is the control panel we want to activate, but we're not going to do it just yet. That's a tease. I ran up to it acting like I was going to hit it. We're not going to hit it yet. We're going to go over to this uh, crate of swords, and we're going to grab a sword, and we're going to use it to uh, move some crates over into this doorway that we came from. So there's going to be some enemies that spawn in the hallway here when we activate that control switch. So what we want to do is make sure that they don't retreat into the previous room, because once you kill enough of them, they'll just run away into the previous room, and then they'll be more annoying to kill. So we're going to slice a uh, crate back here so it's in the way so they won't be able to get past it. And you don't have to use a sword to do this, but it's just obviously uh, easier to use a sword because it sends the crate flying much more easily. It's more easy to move crates with a sword than just a regular melee. And you don't have to worry about running out of uh, sword energy or anything because these swipes do not take away any uh, sword energy. So that is good news. Now I'm going to use the sword crate itself to complete the barricade. Keep swipe and I'll skip ahead a little bit. So here we are with our almost completed barricade. You want to make sure these barricades are flush with each other or flat to the wall and themselves. You don't want it to be like a sloppy uh, barricade with holes and stuff in it because then the elites could just kind of uh, push it out of the way. But if it's a nice tight structure, uh, you won't have the elite be uh, doing any of that. So they'll just kind of be stuck on one side of it. So then we're going to go back into the bridge and grab a plasma pistol, exchange it for your sword. So now you have a needle rifle and a plasma pistol again. And we're going to go up and we're going to actually activate the switch up here this time. Go up here, hit the action button. So then we're going to turn around and there's going to be some grunts, jackals, and one elite that spawned in that hallway we were just uh, barricading. And we want to tear into the grunts with our needler rifle to get the super combined. We want to do the same thing for the jackals. They're obviously a little tougher because they have that shield, but you could shoot their uh, feet and you could shoot their hand uh, through that little notch in their shield. There's that kind of cutout where they shoot from. You could actually shoot that and they won't be stunned. But since it's a needler rifle, they'll probably just dodge out of the way and expose themselves, and you'll be able to uh, land a couple more shots for the super combine. And then for the elite, we're just going to pepper from afar like we do with most elites. And he's not too bad. He doesn't have any devastating weapons or anything. And there's a lot of cover in this room, so once you're on the bridge and you have them all coming from that uh, one hallway, it's pretty easy to actually take them out if you're uh, just cautious and use the uh, cover that you're given patiently and everything. So we're just going to continue on fighting these guys here. We're wrapping up here. I didn't uh, shoot too well in this situation. I was kind of uh, just happy to be towards the end of the mission and just started to uh, lay waste to the uh, enemies over here and not be that accurate, just kind of firing at will. But you should probably uh, pace your shots a little more than I did here and land more shots. Generally a good idea to hit more shots uh, if you can, you know. But uh, we have plenty of needle rifle ammo, so that's why I wasn't too concerned about it. And we have more Needler Rifle waiting for us uh, that we planted earlier. And there's actually a ton uh, back on Corvette, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But you can see we only have one enemy remaining. It's the Elite, and normally he would run away at this point because he has lost all of his buddies. Uh, but you can see he's not moving anywhere because we set up that barricade. He has nowhere to go. And we're just going to move up to this cover and poke our head out a little bit, shoot a few shots, duck back in, and then basically just repeat until he loses his shield, and then we'll just pop him in the head with a Needler rifle round for the one headshot kill. Then we can move forward, and we're going to reload and grab the Needler rifle ammo that we planted up ahead here. 
and we're going to see that the barricade uh, we put in place is going to keep the enemies that spawn in there cornered so we could just easily move up and uh, just totally bypass them. So that's what we're going to do here. And even though we've barricaded them in there, I'm still going to be sneaky and go to the left because I don't want them to uh, be aware that I'm over here in case they decide to uh, just bypass the uh, barricade somehow. We want to hedge our bets here in case they somehow find a way to bust through. They get some crazy strength, infuriated by the fact that I'm over here. But anyway, as we come into this section, you can see there's a bunch of needle rifle ammo in this crate. We're going to grab what we can and then shoot these guys. Uh, you could just lay waste to these guys. They're all distracted by George in the middle of the room here. So you could easily take out these uh, jackals and grunts with the needle rifle. And then once you've taken all those guys out, grab some more needle rifle ammo before we head in here. And we could actually just sneak up behind this elite and assassinate him most likely because he is distracted by George again. So no need to uh, start firing at him with any plasma pistol or anything. Just kind of sneak up behind him. There's a lot of cover in this room, so he should be easy to... Uh, Get around and then once we kill all of the enemies that are initially in this room we want to turn to this door and there's going to be some uh, jackals that walk through four jackals walk through and also two jackals are going to be up and to the right of that door as well up the ramp here and the two jackals up on top of the ramp actually have needler rifles so we could go grab their ammo once we kill them there's also additional ammo in crates on the opposite side of the room on top of the ramps so opposite of where i am now uh, you could see a crate and there's one on the right side as well and then down below, there's actually going to be enemies that spawn through this door. This is the more aggressive strategy that I'm showing you right now. We run up here where we killed those two needler rifle wielding uh, jackals. And then we lay into these grunts over here. And again, this is the more aggressive uh, strategy to go about. It's not too tough if you know where all the enemies are spawning. Um, but the way to do it, if you want to be super conservative, if you're not confident, is to go get in the pelican turret. And when you're in the pelican turret, you are invincible. So it's uh, basically a foolproof way to get through this final room. Uh, though it will take uh, more time probably, but it's a lot safer and it's basically a guarantee that you're going to win. So uh, I will show you how to get in the Pelican turret right now. Uh, it's a very easy thing to do. There's a couple health packs over here if you want to grab some. I'm going to grab some. And then we're going to go next to the turret. Uh, we could actually just crouch towards the nose of the Pelican and hold the action button and it will send you into the turret itself. So you can't see anything at first because the gun itself is visually impairing you. But if you just look down at the ground and start firing, it will actually... Uh, destroy the turret visually but it will actually physically still be there and be invisible and you could fire it and you can see we're kind of in the turret itself uh, because when we fire it's just a big flash it's kind of like we're staring down the barrel of the gun that we can't see uh, all we can see is the flash of the uh, gunfire coming out of the barrel uh, but basically just hang here you'll get an achievement if you haven't already gotten this uh, George can't have all the big guns use the pelican turret uh, so there you go a bonus achievement here but uh, basically, you could just hang out here for the rest of the mission and just fire at all the enemies. The thing that might make this annoying and might make it longer is the fact that sometimes the enemies like to hide behind things and then you're just kind of unable to move and change your position because you're obviously stuck in the turret. But one thing to mention is you can get in and out, but since I actually visually destroyed the pelican turret, it may despawn eventually at some point and we won't be able to get back into it. So you could just stay in there for the whole time and not risk it despawning on you. So I'm not going to stay in the pelican turret. I'm going to show you the more aggressive strategy. But if you're not confident or uh, comfortable doing any of this, just totally stay in the pelican the whole time. Uh, right when you get in this room, you could go into that pelican at any point. So just get in there and stay in there and uh, be safe and cozy in your pelican invincibility turret. But if you want to be more aggressive with me, we're going to go up here onto this platform and kill the elite from above because there is going to be more enemies that spawn in and we want to be at this position once that happens. So we're going to pepper this guy as he's distracted by George and we're going to use that ledge for cover like we've been doing. Just shoot right over the edge and then we're going to move over here and in this uh, doorway there's going to be a bunch of grunts that walk through. So I'm going to kill them and once three of them die I believe the elites to my left spawn. So I'm standing at this doorway strategically. So when this door opens the elites are taken by surprise and they go into their angry animation where they kind of roar and throw their hands in the air. And that allows me to easily wrap around both of them and assassinate them before they could do anything else before they uh, get out of that animation. And then that will uh, spawn in the four final elites. And one of them spawns right here where we are, so we could do the same thing, basically. Just wait for him to spawn in. Uh, he'll get angry and startled, and we could assassinate him. And then uh, there's basically one elite that spawns at each of the four corners. So uh, we killed the one that we were at here. The one that was on our side of the uh, room over here just kind of walked over this catwalk and came at us, and we assassinated him. And we're going to move over here, and now at this point I'm going to uh, realize that the pelican uh, turret has despawned. I try to get in it to no avail. So basically I'm going to have to continue being awesome and killing these people on foot without the invincible pelican turret. But that's alright, we killed the first two of four in the final wave, and we'll kill the final two on foot as well. 
So we're going to basically just kind of wait until they're distracted by George. George is still in the middle of the room. He's constantly there. He can't die. So always just go hide and rely on him to uh, start getting the attention of the elites once more. And then you can kind of try to wrap up behind these guys and assassinate them. But if you start approaching them and they turn around and start firing at you, remember that you have the needler rifle and you could use that to get them to dodge and uh, start jumping out of the way or go into armor lock. So then you could easily just assassinate them or retreat, uh, whatever you feel is best. But uh, that's what we're going to do here for these final two guys. Uh, I make sure I have my needle rifle out by hitting the back button. And then we're going to engage them uh, from behind. Not like that. Get your mind out of the gutter. We're almost done with this mission here. We need to focus. So uh, you can see here I'm trying to assassinate this elite. Whenever an elite dodges or uh, kind of sidesteps, he's always going to come up facing the uh, way he was facing initially. So if he dives forward, backwards, side to side... Uh, he's always going to be facing in the same direction. So you could use that knowledge to kind of uh, position yourself uh, appropriately when he does come out of his roll or his dodge or sidestep or whatever. And then you could hopefully uh, land that assassination. This guy is not taking his assassination quietly. But another thing to note is when you're doing this, when you're kind of uh, shooting your needler at this guy and he's dodging around and everything, uh, it's all well and good until uh, you find that you need to reload. So just be aware that your needler rifle will run out of bullets and you'll have to reload at one point. And uh, when that point comes, you will be vulnerable. So hopefully you'll kill the guy before that happens, but hopefully uh, you'll pace your shots as well. So don't just fire at will. You want to kind of shoot two or three times uh, each time he pops up, and that will get him to dodge again. But don't keep firing at him unless he goes into armor lock, and then obviously you want to keep firing until you're in position to uh, assassinate him, and then you could actually stop firing. He'll pop out of it, and then you could just kill him with the back smack. And uh, that guy went down after armor locking briefly. And that is the end of this mission. Uh, that was the aggressive approach, obviously. The Pelican turret where you have infinite health and bullets is a great option too if you're not as comfortable. And uh, I'm going to throw down a dome shield here right on this area. And that will get the dome shield to be in the cutscene momentarily. So uh, that's just something I like to do. But that's a wrap on Part 5, Long Night of Solace, one of the hardest missions in Halo Reach. I will see you next time for Part 6 when we do Exodus. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides and I'll see you in the next one.